Let's be honest, the relationship between gamers and game journalists hasn't been good in the past decade. But the Fallout TV show has caused some game journalists to go full mask off about their hatred for gamers. The show is a really good use case. The show is diverse, female-centric. It's neither incredibly hyped nor Velma levels of complete degeneracy fueling the ad revenue of YouTubers to new heights. It's not a show that has become the darling of either left-wing Hollywood or all-right commentators. So why in the absence of any kind of controversy surrounding much of the show are some games journalists so bothered by the Fallout TV series? It's probably useful to say something at the start about how you would expect media to work in most cases. So let's use me, my small YouTube channel, as an example. When I make a video like this, I ask myself, who is my audience? What would they like? And how in the time allotted in the video can I entertain them, inform them, or cheer them up and just make their day better? Back in the old days, this was called entertainment. People make media, they make things that their audience will enjoy. Now, let's backtrack a bit and look at a review of the Fallout TV show from an outlet that clearly doesn't like games or gaming media or know anything about what they're talking about. So let's take a review from The Playlist, which is an outlet that generally covers independent cinema. And I'm going to have to do this in a mixed European accent because the prose just demands it. The cold, blissful, brutal tone of contrast at its center soon becomes glowingly Pollyannish, exasperating, never as clever, amusing, or witty as it thinks it is. The lack of self-awareness makes the fallout even more painful as it clumsily plods along with a lifeless one-note one joke that never thrills or excites in a sign of monotonous filler that never even has the gall to the flashbacks to the ghoul's past as an actor even though it elucidates next to nothing. Whenever my European friends tell me they don't think their English is very good, I always point them to what journalists actually put in newspapers. But anyways, continuing on. This is clearly the sort of passable English that they teach you at a modern university where you study the English language by reading translations of authors like Proust and Kafka in translation without a lick of knowledge of either French or German. Because perhaps it's an English class and you should be reading Shakespeare, you barbarians. But this is just one dude's opinion, all written in the style of a website that generally covers independent films and literary adaptations. Normie TV shows like this are clearly below the intelligence of a linguistic genius like this writer. This is one of those cases where you sort of want to ask, well, why did you even do this review in the first place? But if you look at their reviews overall, it's consistent with their pretentious attitude towards modern TV and television, so it's really no surprise. Most other mainstream outlets had a much more favorable response. But I came across one article whose complaints about the show are as much complaints about its audience as the show itself. And this is what I found really fascinating and really telling about the relationship between gamers and game journalists. But you might ask me, old man Banjo, what journalistic output could get things so hilariously wrong in print when The Guardian gave the show a 10 out of 10? Well, I don't know how much my American audience knows about the British media. But if the opinion of The Guardian is actually solid, we in this country know that there's only one place to go for more deep millennial douchebaggery. The place where culture goes to die, The Independent. Their review is an absolutely mask-off example of gamer hate where no political issues are involved at all, just a dislike for gamers, straight up mask-off. Let's begin with a few choice quotes from this review. Later in the episode, she is slapped near fatally, but manages to treat herself instantaneously with a stim pack. What would be in the game a health-giving pickup item? Well, the issue is that these little nods don't actually offer any greater depth of meaning or emotional resonance. They're just empty exophora, semantic dead ends. So obviously, this is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard a reviewer say. The fact that people heal with stim packs is not meant to create greater emotional resonance within the game. They heal with stim packs because the in-world lore demands that this is how it happens. Stim packs and other health tech surrounding radiation and the like are critical to explaining how people are surviving in the wasteland given the dangers. They're not there to make you feel more emotions, though they might. They're there to make the world consistent with its own internal logic. To immerse yourself in the world. How would you survive getting your arm blown off by a super mutant without a stim pack? 
or getting completely irradiated by a bunch of ghouls without some rat away? The answer is you wouldn't unless you're no longer human, but these are humans in the wasteland. The steampunk as tech in Fallout is what conveys the logic of the world to the player or viewer and so makes it immersive. Also, I had to reread the sentence several times because it contains a really pretentious mistake. Stick around with me, get your pencils and pads out because it's teacher old man Banjo when he's back. Exophora are items in a language. They're linguistic items. It's a plural abstract noun. It means things that are pointed to in language but aren't a part of the sentence. What he clearly meant to say is not that they are exophora, i.e. bits of language, but rather that they are being treated exophorically to point out to the audience referential bits of content from the games. But he didn't even get the grammar right. Still pretentious, but my version at least makes logical sense. But heck, if you don't understand the importance of stim packs in the Fallout world, I don't think you're going to be very good at graduate level linguistics. They continue on to explain this thought that I just mentioned, saying, on some level, it gamifies the very act of TV viewing. Narrative storytelling reduced to spot the thing. It's impossible to not to view this as a reaction to Hollywood's historical mishandling of video game adaptations a lurch back in the other direction, from oblivious disregard to pious homage. If your version of Gamified is Spot the Thing, I don't know what to say about that or how you think games work. Also, while there have been many unfaithful game adaptations in the past, there have been a lot of unfaithful ones too. They just weren't that popular due to the fact that many of them were bad. They weren't bad because they were unfaithful to the source material. A lot of those films just weren't very good. Look at all the unique films in the early 90s and late 80s surrounding franchises like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Not every bad gaming movie is like that Mario film from the early 90s, which really did shred very heavily across the Mario lore boundaries. You might be thinking that these criticisms are sort of weird, out of place, and don't make any sense. At least that was my impression reading this article here. But thankfully, our journo here is going to go full mask off and explain what is bothering him about the Fallout TV show in the conclusion. And surprise, surprise, it's you. So, what is this? Bollocks journal. Oh. But YouTube demands that at this point in the video, I ask that you please like and subscribe to the video. The growth on this channel has been absolutely insane at the moment. It's blown my mind and cheered me up so much. I've so enjoyed the streams lately as well, talking and chatting to everyone. I know it's a small channel, but it really does mean a lot to me that people subscribe and I love making this content. So it's nice that people watch it and I get to talk about it with you all. And I do read all the comments, well, at least I try to. It's really blown up lately. I've had more than I can usually deal with, but it's awesome. And I, I love to have you guys around. Anyways, click the button. But back to our journal of the week and him going full mask off. I'll start reading again. It would be harsh to dismiss Fallout entirely because of this. There are things about the series to admire, including strong turns from its three leads and a mordant sense of humor that generally tends to land. But there's no avoiding the specter of games, <laughs> the naked desire to win the favor of the Fallout subreddit. At a certain point, it becomes immaterial whether Fallout is a great video game adaptation. What matters is whether it's great television. To use this guy's own language here against him, these comments so far before this paragraph have been a mere epiphenomenon when it comes to explaining his review so far. The reason that for him these references contain no emotional resonance or are simply a case of point at the thing, which he got grammatically wrong, is because he hates Fallout fans. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Reddit. But the Fallout Reddit is a pretty good community, at least as communities go online, especially in terms of the lore, discussion, and keeping the games alive. When I read this article, I immediately thought, hey, this journalist probably isn't a gamer. He's probably like 50 years old, does legacy media, and doesn't get the gaming community. In fact, I had to re-edit the script when I realized that I was wrong. And I could understand at that point how dumb these criticisms were coming from someone that didn't understand these things. And then I realized this guy's a 30 something millennial game journalist whose life work is to review games. You can literally sense the disdain for gamers by how they shift the goalposts from a great adaptation, which at least for narrative based games tends to be quite important to a, uh, well, 
it's a good TV show. It's just a shame it was made for gamers. If I've said it once in this channel, I've said it a hundred times. One of the most unique things about gaming journalists is the way they hate gamers. This is abnormal. Most journalists write about things they love. Political journalists tend to be very interested in politics. Heavy metal journalists tend to love heavy metal. Christian issues journalists tend to be Christians and care about Christianity. Gaming journalists are one of the only forms of journalism that hate the very consumers of the media that they cover. 